God bless you. This is the day the Lord hath made. We shall continue to rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's glad, good to see all of you here today in our Bible study and those who are with us in our virtual audience, this hybrid experience. And we thank God for he is a righteous God and he is a loving God. He's a merciful God, but he's also a God that chastises. And when he chastises, that shows that he loves us. So we thank God for all that he is and who we are today through Christ Jesus. And I thank God for you being with us today to be able to enjoy and share in the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by what? So we thank God for you. To all those that are watching us virtually from all over the world, we thank God that you would be with us on all of our platforms, whether it's lookatgod.org, lookatgod.com, our app, YouTube, or uh, Facebook Live, whatever uh, uh, platform you're on, we thank God for you. We thank you for a wonderful experience on Sunday at our 8, 30, and 11 o'clock services. It was just an awesome time in the name of the Lord. Um, just an unusual experience. Uh, yeah, it, that, uh, Dr. Newton and I were talking about yesterday how the choir like took us through 20 years uh, with a song, with a medley of songs. It was just an excellent thing. And the Brother Meeks and uh, uh, the uh, Appreciation Committee, Preacher Stewart, we thank God uh, for you, my wife and I, and our children. We thank God for that farewell Sunday, and we are going to read through those memory books. And thank you for celebrating my birthday on last week. As I told some of the person, I told Reverend McLean a while ago, when she get when she get my age, she see how it feel. Amen. So, so we thank God for each and every one of you. I'm glad to say I'm 53 years old. I'm glad to see it, especially when I didn't think I was going to make it to see 30. So I just thank God for 53 years and what the Lord is doing. Um, we are going to continue. Uh, as we said, it was a wonderful time on Sunday. And the DVDs, I know many of you have been calling in and asking about the DVDs. Normally, you can get those each Sunday, and we will make sure you're able to get those each Sunday after services. But because of technical difficulties, we couldn't get them to you on this Sunday. But we will rectify that this week, and you'll be able to have it. I had a couple of people say uh, in here today, and also those who called in while we were here on yesterday about getting the DVDs. You can get them later today. After this Bible study, you can get to 830. And then later on today, you'll be able to get the um, 11 o'clock. And I want to say God bless you to all of those who serve, who have served, are serving, and yet to serve. Happy Veterans Day. How many veterans we got in the house here? Amen. Give God praise for all of them. Amen. We thank God for them and thank God for what the Lord has spared them. They got stories that they could tell on how the Lord brought them out. And uh, we just thank God for all of them. We want to thank, I want to thank Dr. Newton for starting this Bible study um, when I wasn't here for the last couple of weeks. And it, it talks about a wonderful thing that the subject difficult times are part of the Christian's life. How many of y'all can testify to that? Difficult times are part of a Christian's life. Problem is our world has made it so uh, uh, esoteric and commercial and material that people don't believe that by being a Christian, you're not going to have trouble. It's because we have somehow foreshadowed our faith and our relationship with God as something of a token and not something of a relationship. So people see that Christianity is only being on Sunday or when they go out to feed people or when they go out to help people. But understand your Christianity is personal. Your relationship is personal. Those things that we do, those attributes that we receive, those attributes that we have, those deeds that we do are part of a Christian's life. But first of all, it becomes personal, not outward. So it has to be internal before it becomes external because external is temporal. Internal, internal is something that you have to be renewed and washed through the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's personal. So we like to describe it as when you have uh, a relationship with God in your Christianity, it is, uh, is, is vertical. When you're dealing with people and dealing with the esoteric or the things of the outside, it's horizontal. You're dealing with the things of the world and the things of the earth. But when you're dealing with God, it's a vertical, it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship. So, so when you seek him, understand there is a cost for your Christianity. Now understand this, the cost does not have to be paid for you to be a Christian because Jesus already paid the price. 
So when he paid that price, it is finished. It's done. He did that. That's a done deal. It's a done thing. However, once you become, you're going to go through trials. Once you become a Christian, you're going to go through trials. You're going to go through uh, tragedies. You're going to go through hardships. You're going to go through hard times. And it is not, see, this is the thing that, that gets me. You don't stop being a Christian because you're going through. Because if you can stop, you never were. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Now, you will go through, you will go, the spirit of, of anxiety, the spirit of depression, the spirit of, of tiredness may come upon you. But understand, you've got to endure like a good soldier. And we have to understand that you're going to go through. It does, what you go through doesn't change your value. Sister McLean, Rev. McLean said something that was profound. She didn't even realize what she was saying. She said, Pastor, you're moving a little slow this morning. And I was. I'm moving a little slow this morning. Now, that was a great observation because it's true. That's my physical. My spiritual is 155,000. But my physical is a little bit tired. Because of the afflictions, because of the hardships, because of the struggles, because of the assignments, it wears my body down. But my spirit or my gift still has the same value. And you've got to understand those things that are in you are more valuable than the afflictions that hit you on the outside. And when you see that, the observation is, and that was a true observation. I ain't throwing shade. I'm just saying that's, that's what it is. She saw the evidence. And you're able to see the evidence. But that does not stop your anointing. That does not stop your wherewithal. It does not stop your confidence. You've got to be, see, see, I'm, I'm going to do this similar to what, what we talked about, Dr. Newton. How many of you would like this dollar bill, this $20 bill right here? It, it's, it's valuable. It's valuable. Amen. All right. How many folks say they want it? All right. All right. How many of you still want it? You still want it. You still want it. You still want it. Why do you still want it? Because it still got value. Come on here. And see, you've got to understand, sometimes we're the same way. We're tossed to and fro. We're cast on every side. But we're not in despair. We're troubled, but we're still confident. This thing has been torn into pieces, but it's still got value. Somebody got to realize, I've been torn asunder, but I still got value. And that's the object of the lesson today, to understand right what we were talking about, that indeed all who delight in pity, we got to understand that we go through things, but difficult times are part of a Christian's experience. Difficult times are part of that, do that $20 bill experience. But guess what? All you got to do is tape it back together. You tape it back together. You know what I found out, Reverend Van Dyke? If you got all the pieces and you take it to the bank, they will give you a new $20 bill because the body is messed up, but the value is still the same. Good God Almighty. I will preach that, all right? Now, let's go to our, let's go to our handout. Let's go to our handout. Let's, let's start with uh, number three. Amen. I get there and start preaching. To go to three points and be hooping at the end, all right? So, so let's go to number three. That's uh, page three and that's slide three. And I think our media ministry has it uh, back there. And, and I'm going to uh, ask for some help here in a minute with some mics that we'll be able to do this. Because I want to read this. Some great scriptures. Uh, whoever, whoever you want to do it, all right? And, and, and we're going to, uh, whoever wants to read, whoever wants to read. And um, AV Ministry, if we can get this scripture here, I mean, if we can get this uh, microphone here. All right. All right. So, so in just a minute, uh, Reverend McClain, I'm going to get you on James 1, 2 through 5. That's, that's right there on the right-hand side. And I'm going to start with 1 Peter 1, 7. Now, first of all, I want you to know this. God allows trials so that our faith our faith, our faith will be strengthened. How many of you know what faith is? Somebody tell me what faith is. All right, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's our faith. Now, that is the 
perfect and great definition because it's biblical. What does it mean to you? What is your faith? What's your faith, Dr. Newt? Uh-huh. Faith without, without evidence of seeing in the natural, but being able to believe in the spiritual. And, 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 see, and see, that's it right there. That's your faith. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Believe it before you see it. And that's the sums up what faith is. Faith has to be personal. Now, we understand we can be able to go and quote and do and all of this stuff, but if you don't believe it, Ben, you can't operate on nobody else's faith. You've got to operate on the faith that you have in your God, which then gives you a personal relationship. It says God allows trials so that our faith will be strengthened. Now, I'm going to be able to deal with this. First Peter 6 and 7, it said, you, and this is from the Amplified, you should be exceedingly glad on this account, through, uh, uh, though now for a little while ye may be distressed by trials and suffer temptations and suffer temptations temptations let me see your definition for temptation Tempta temptation is a desire to do something especially that's wrong or unwise against the word of God temptation is a desire to do something especially that is wrong or unwise against the word of God so that's the temptation it goes first of all it goes against Jesus it goes against his word but then the desire in your flesh is to be able to do it even though the word tells you it's wrong. That's a temptation, all right? Let's keep going here with this scripture. So that the genuineness of your faith may be tested. Your faith, which is infinitely more precious than perishable gold, which is tested and purified by what? Fire. This proving of your faith is intended to redound. Now, what's the word that redound mean? Redound. Redound. Anyone know what that means? Redound. Let me give it to you right quick. Redound means to contribute greatly to a person's honor or character. It redound. Redound. Contribute greatly to a person's honor or character. Redound. To the praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, is revealed. So if I break it down, that means that when I go through the temptation, when I go through the test, when I go through the trial that is, I'm going through, for ultimately, look at the end of it, the honor when Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, gets revealed. So if I take that into my mind and be able to deal with my own experience, that means that when I go through, Jesus manifests himself. Does not mean he ain't already there. I had somebody to, to argue with me, not argue with me, send a rebuttal to me online about me saying two things. But one thing is, it's when we were dealing with going through troubles and trials that uh, Jesus Christ allows things to happen to you. And I said, what is the rebuttal? I don't understand. The scripture, I gave him scripture after scripture, how Jesus tells us that many are the afflictions of the righteous. He, he tells us all of that. But the question was, if God is a loving God, why would he allow us to go through that? So their premise was that if God was really who he said, we wouldn't go through what we go through. That is diametrically opposed to the Christian experience through the life of Jesus Christ. He went through it so he could show us that if he could send his son to go through it, we shall go through it also. So you've got to understand, anytime you're wondering why you're going through, and I want to read it so you'll have it here, and I'm going back to the middle of it. It says, distressed by trials and suffer temptation. Because understand something, Jesus is not going to tempt you. He will test you, but, he's not going to, but he will allow you to be tempted, but not above measure, not above what you are able. That does not mean that he will not allow some things to come on you some things to uh, be able to almost compress you. But the God of all grace, he's saying to you, if you trust me, I'm going to reveal myself in the midst of the situation. Then when I made the statement that God is not coming or going, that he's already there, that you don't have to send him to the hospital, you don't have to send him to the rest home, you don't have to send him to your mama's house. He's already there, but it's manifestation. 
God wants us to have enough faith in him that while we're enduring the afflictions, while we're enduring the temptations, while we're enduring the trials, that we will seek him. It does not mean he's not already there, but we're asking him to reveal himself or manifest himself in that place, in that situation. So when I'm talking about healing of my body, the attack on my body, the attack on my back that's got me moving slow. Understand, God manifests your healing inside of my body. He's already there, but I need for him to reveal himself. I need for him to show himself that something even the medicine cannot do. So what he's doing is say, Thompson, you're going to have to go through it, but God, I'm doing your work. And some of you are saying, well, God, I'm serving the, the sick. I'm, I'm feeding the poor. Why would you let me be down in my back? Why would you let me be down in my body? Why would you let me be down in my finances? He said, those things are not happening because I, I dislike you. Those things are happening because I'm going to allow myself to be revealed in the midst of the financial situation, in the midst of the bad back, in the midst of the trouble, in the midst of the trial. But these are the things we have to endure. For God allows, allows trials so that our faith will be strengthened. And how do you do that? When you go through one thing, it'll make you to be able to have faith that when you go through another, if God brought me through this, he'll bring me through something on the other side. But guess what? If you didn't go through that, if you didn't know he could heal you, you wouldn't be able to claim him as a healer. If you did not know that he would bring you out, you wouldn't be able to say that he's a lily in the valley and the bright in the morning star. But you have to go through it. That builds your faith. So he builds your faith on this level. So when you get to this level of attack or this level of temptation, you can say, oh, no, devil. Oh, no, enemy. You ain't going to get me with that because my God brought me through last year, brought me through the year before. He'll bring me through right now. That's the mindset of the mentality that we've got to have. So when we deal with this, he does it so we'll be strengthened because there's no other way. You can pump all the iron you want to. That will get your physical body right. But your spiritual body comes through with going through the afflictions and going through that building of your faith. As the old song says, I feel better, so much better, since I laid my burdens down. Now understand, it did not say burden, it said burdens. Because you will continually have burdens. But I feel better when I lay it down, when you leave it where it's supposed to be. But that don't mean you won't wake up the next day with some, same, some stuff going on in your life. But you're better able to handle it. I've said it before and I believe it. There's no way you can sit under the word of God and the teaching of the word of God and still be at the frail place you were when you started. I just don't believe it because I don't care how, how, how weak of a teacher uh, is in front of you. I don't care what size of the church. I don't care if your Bible is torn up. If you hear the word of God and you receive that word of God and you meditate on that word of God, you're going to grow no matter what. You, you're going to grow because God won't, he won't let his word return unto him void. Amen. Amen. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. All right. Uh, Reverend McLean, start at James 1, 2 through 5. All right, hold up right there. Consider it joy. Now, how am I going to consider that? That's, that's, that's tomfoolery uh, to the world. How are you going to consider it joy when I'm going through? I'm crying and supposed to consider it joy. That's what the word, but see, the word of God teaches you to see things different. Remember, we talked about faith is the substance of things what? Hope for and the evidence of things what? What the trials do, but your faith in God, the trials come to, uh, to, to wear you down. It comes to afflict, but your faith says I'm better than what I'm going through. Now, that, that, that sounds real crazy, but people who are worldly or fleshly can't understand that because they look for worldly evidence or they look for practical evidence or, or empirical evidence that's on the earth. But you deal with a spiritual God. You, you're a spiritual being, so your faith there goes beyond what you can see in the natural, and then you've got to see in the spiritual. So when you see it in the spiritual, it says count it all joy. Or be wholly joyful. That's a dangerous thing to be able to say to somebody who don't know. But that's why you are able to see I, I wholly joyful, my brethren, whenever you are enveloped or entangled and encountered in trials of any sort or fall into various temptations. Keep reading for me, uh, Reverend.
All right, hold up right there. Endurance, steadfastness, steadfastness, and patience. I used to run track. That's the words that the coach used to use. Endurance, steadfastness, and patience. I ran something called the 1600 meter. And what you had to do, that ain't no fast run. You ain't, that ain't the 100 meter. Uh uh. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't the 60 yard, 30 yard, that, that, that's what. You got to pace yourself. And what you do, that's it. And you just keep going around the track until you get to that last 400 meter. And that's when you get your kick. Because I had to endure and save my lungs. I had to save my breath. Now, a lot of people kept going past me. And because my eyesight saw them ahead of me, I wanted to catch them. But my coach taught me if I would just run my race, when it's time, I'll still have win to win at the end. So when I got to that halfway mark of that last 400 meters, the others were slowing down. Then I got what we call a runner's kick. And I got a chance to get it, and I got to give all. They already gave what they had in, 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 the, in, the, in, 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 in uh, the 4 8 in the 1,200. But by the time I got to almost 1,600, I was ready to go, and I was able to go past them. They were out of breath, but I was getting my win, and I was able to use the last win I had to go through the finish line. God, therefore, allows us through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to go through the race. And he's saying to you, you cannot just think you're going to run one hundred meter dash and that's going to be it. You're going to have to understand you got to go through over and over and over again. And sometimes it's the building of that faith that allows you to have that kick. But you've got to have steadfastness, endurance and patience. And when you got that, you can run this thing because let me tell you, when people are strung out because they go through trouble, when they give up on their life because they go through trouble, when they uh, just, just bug out and say, I ain't having no remote responsibilities because life is too hard, that shows me that they have not built that steadfastness, that patience and endurance. How many just believe no matter what happened, God's going to bring me out of this? I just believe it. And anybody that says that, yeah, and you, know, you know what I found out? And this is a strange thing. It's either right after you got saved or when you mature that you have that level of exuberance and steadfastness and, and endurance. Because when you first get saved, you feel like you can do anything. Oh, Lord, you can jump. I remember when Dr. Newton got saved in here. I remember when he got saved right in here. And when we were in this building, when he came, I remember that day he got saved. He's never wavered in his walk with what he did with the Lord. But I saw, you can see, when he, was, when he first got saved, he read it. He read, cut every devil head off that came up. Every scripture that he knew was coming out of his mouth. Then he went through seasoning. Still faithful, still enduring, still patient. But now when, when he's reached a level of maturity, he's back at that same level. But he had to go through this right here to come back on the other side. That, that right here was where he was learning, where God was proving him and making him better for him to be able to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Jesus Christ. That's not only his story. That's not only my story. That's all of our stories. And the way you're able to do that is have that patience, endure it, and steadfast. You've got to stick with it. Somebody say stick with it. Amen. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, go. Reverend, that's right. Stay faithful. Somebody who said faithful? He's faithful. Hey, when we ain't faithful. Y'all hear that? He's faithful, Reverend McCall, when we ain't faithful. Now, I know some of y'all can't admit this. You ain't always been faithful. And I ain't talking about before Christ. I'm talking about during Christ. And he said, you know what? Even though you're wrong, I'm going to whoop your tail, but you still mine. I I'm going to let you go through this, but you still mine. I'm going to let you get towed up but you're still mine. And after you suffered a little while, I will establish, strengthen, and settle you and put you back on level ground. But that's where you get to joy. That's how you can shout. Some folks are not shouting because they're happy. They're shouting because they're going through trial. Because they know I can give God praise right now and because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to settle myself. I'm going to shut my mouth and I'm going to give God glory not because of, of what I'm, what, what, what I'm going to get, but because of what I'm going through. Because sometimes we get to the point where we forget, we forget that God has taken us through it, not to give us just a blessing. You know, we, we mess that up. Oh, I'll oh, we'll do it. I can get a blessing, get a blessing, get a blessing. What if he don't give you a blessing, but he lets you survive? Now, now see, that's the blessing right there. How many of you been in a situation where you didn't know how you were going to make it? 
You did not know that that death about took you out. That financial situation about messed you up. That house fire about put you down. When your friends separating from you about, about turned you out. But God was faithful. And that's what you are, that's what he's building in that. That's what he's building in that. Stop looking at the temporal. Stop looking at the esoteric. Stop looking at the material. Those things are going to come. God knows. He, we need those things. But more than that, I need my faith to be strengthened. I need my fortitude in Christ to be able to be so strong that I can be patient, that I can endure, that I can wait until God's change comes. Amen. Keep going, Reverend McLean. It said, let you do a thorough work. No, it said, let patience, faith, and endurance do a thorough work. Because you can't do it by yourself. You can't fight this fight that you're going through by yourself. Keep going, Reverend. So that you may be fruitful, perfectly and fully developed in every good work. Now, how am I going to be perfectly and fully developed? I talked about it earlier. Getting saved, going through, maturing, climbing, going higher. He is maturing us. He is growing us up. Y'all ever seen a child? I, I looked at uh, uh, Sister Oliver's nephew. I think that's your nephew that played football for Pine Forest. Ain't that that young man? Your grandson. And I saw him and Mr. young Jalen uh, uh, McDonald. Both of them are members of this church. Saw both of them here. Now both of them taller than me. I had to push them back so they don't look down on top of my head. I don't like nobody taller than me looking at me like that. And they all muscular. They all got all the muscles and stuff and, and, and can do anything on the field. And I watched them in the playoff game the other night. And I was sitting there saying, look at it. They done growed up. Look how they've matured. And look how they talk. And look at their mannerism. And look at that. But see, you don't have a full appreciation if you didn't see them as a baby. Because if you don't see them as a baby, what you're going to do is see the finished product. But when you see them, what they had to come through and what they had to endure, that makes you have a better appreciation. But guess what? They didn't do it. It was the God of all grace that grove them up. Because if you gave them the mic, no matter they're 17 or 18 year old, they would give a testimony of what they came through. That so you see the finished product, but you don't see the thorns. You don't see the storms that I had to go through to get where I am. How many of y'all realize that God has brought you to a great place right now? But if people could see not your finished product, but to see what you had to get through to get here, they wouldn't sit up there and presume and make accusations like they do because folks don't know what you had to come through. But that's that patience built that. You can't do it yourself. You can't do it yourself. You don't have the power, the ability of the anointing to do it yourself. It's only through Jesus Christ. I am that I am by the grace of God. Good God Almighty in here. Amen. All right. Uh, uh, keep going, Reverend. If you lack wisdom, ask God. That's not the wisdom of the world. That's the wisdom of God. We got a lot of smart folk in the world, and they just as dumb in the spirit as you can see because you can tell by their actions and their fruits. Wisdom of the world will get you out of some of the earthly problems that confront you, but godly wisdom will be able to help you maneuver and get delivered from the things that are spiritual. The Bible tells us, and I think it's 2 Corinthians, it says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Christ. Now, notice what it says, casting down uh, 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 imaginations in every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Christ. Worldly wisdom exalted itself against the knowledge of Christ. Because it will always tell you what can happen in the natural and does not believe in the thing of the spiritual. But the spiritual says, I can control the natural and the spiritual because I'm God all by myself. So instead of seeking what can be done, now let me give you an example. If your car is messed up and you need a mechanic, I ain't going to say you ain't going to have to go to the shop. I ain't going to say you're going to have to pay the bill. But if you're on the road and your car mess up 
And you sitting there saying, Lord, just let me make it to the place. God, no, and y'all, y'all ain't never been there. I, I, I've, been, I've been on 95, said, Lord, please. Just, I, yo, that car be going, hook, 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 hook. You know, be having tuberculosis, that thing, hook. You know, he said, Lord, I, in the name of Jesus. I had to do that before I put my hand on my steering wheel. That boy, Lord, I'm your child. I ain't supposed to be walking out here on 95. Please let me make it down. I said, Lord, if it be thy will, let me make it to Black's Tire. Let me make it to Firestone in the name of Jesus smoking and talking and poop, poop, poop. And then the car, car, in the name of Talitha Kumai, get back up. I said, car, you better cut back on. Jesus, tell that car, your child up in this car. And I make it to that place, get out of the car. Folk looking at me, I said, thank you. I made it to my destination. I made it to my destination. Now, some of you would say that's luck. Don't believe in it. The divine providence and sovereignty of God will take you where you need to go. And even if I would have broke down on 95, God would keep me there. But my prayer was that I make it to the mechanic. My prayer was not that the car was fixed because I recognized in the natural something was wrong with it. But in the spiritual, I needed for him to get me to my destination so the mechanic could work on the natural. But I needed him to spiritually deliver me where I could be safe and get my car fixed. So I give God praise for the spiritual that he keeps me and he takes me from to and fro, up and down, from, from danger, seen and unseen danger. But I go through that trial. And when you go through that, you say, well, why do I have to go through this? God, why didn't he just fix it? If he got such a great God, why didn't he fix it? You got to look at what could have happened. You got to look at what, 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 what if the motor would have blew up? What if it would have caught on fire while you're in there? But God keeps you, so he lets you go through these things. Amen. I got to hurry up. I'm still on the first slide. Help me, Jesus. All right. Uh, next, next. Uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, Reverend McLean read that one. Reverend McCall, get ready to read this one. Oh, I remember, what was that? I'm sorry. I, I can't see. Praise the Lord. You said Reverend. That's, what you, that's prophetic. Eh? Amen. Look at she said not. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Trials enable us to develop the person God wants us to be. Trials enable. Let me give you the definition of enable. Give someone the authority or the means by which to do something. Give someone the authority or the means by which to do something. You're enabled by Jesus Christ. All right? Read for me, sister. Now, th this is strange what Job is saying in 23, 8 through 10. He said, I go forward, he ain't there. I go backward, and I cannot perceive him. So understand something. He's saying he's not there. So you got to ask your question. If I'm going through, where is God? Now, that's what you would ask in the natural. But in the spiritual, you know he's there. Because just like I talked about with the car, even though I'm going through, he's still there. And some folk don't get that. Because God is not bounty to a quicker picker up or brill cream. Little dab or do you? This is a race, not a sprint. And when you go through this, you've got to say, you know what? Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. This is what Job was saying. But you've got to understand the totality of what Job was saying. And if you read that first verse through the seventh verse, you're going to find some lamenting from Job. Because while you're going through, that does not mean that sometimes in this flesh, you won't say, well, you know what? God, I don't know if I'm going to make this. Oh, Lord, I don't see, I don't see how this is going to work. God, I know you, I know you all power and all knowledge and pastor keep talking about that you El Shaddai and you Jehovah Jireh. And I hear that and I believe, but I ain't seeing it right now. I, what, what I'm looking at don't look like that right now. But that does not stop my trust in God. So what God would do is give you an enabling to be able to go through it. Job said, look at here, in my natural, I can't see him. I can't, I can't I go backwards, can't see him, go forward, can't see him. But understand something, that when Job was offered up, he said, have you considered my humble servant, Job? There's none like him on the earth. He assures evil. He is upright. He gives me penance daily. He, he sacrifices because he knew the character of Job. Your spiritual character has to be better than the character of what you're going through. And when you understand that, you will be able to go through that trial and it will develop the person to what God wants us to be. Somebody tell me what God wants us to be. Want to be what? Want us to be Christ-like. That's what he wants us to be, Christ-like. Somebody else? 
Obedient wants us to be what else? Faithful, humble, servant, forgiving, all of those things. That's the makeup of the characteristics of the nature of God. Those things should still be inside of us, even while we're going through. Because those things are built and manifested while we're going through. And a lot of folks don't understand that the fruit of the Spirit, you can ask for the fruit of the Spirit. Ain't nothing wrong with asking for the fruit, fruit of the Spirit. But I found out that those things are manifested even more while you're going through. When you're going through, you're able to see all of those things being able to manifest. But you're going through because you, he's trying to enable us to develop the person, de develop the person God wants us to be. Read that next one, um, 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 sister. Now, Job is still looking for deliverance. There's nothing wrong with seeking God. So I don't want y'all to get this confused. You say, well, pastor, uh, you said he ain't coming to go and he's already there. But that does not stop you from asking for his intervention. That does not stop you asking for his manifestation. Now, understand uh, Psalms 34 and 4 said, I sought the Lord and he heard me. And see, when he delivered him from all of his trouble, he had to seek him. Well, if I had to seek him, because he's, he's the reward of them that diligently do what? Seek him. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to develop and enable us to be able to call and trust on him because he wants us, yes, to have trust that he's going to do it, but he's a jealous God. He wants to hear his name called. He wants to hear you ask for his help. He wants to see you fall down before him, prostrate before him, and say, Lord, here am I. Send me. I surrender all that I have, all that I have, all that I, I, I am, I owe to thee. That's what he's looking for. So, so Job is still seeking him. But look at this. Keep going, sister. He know the way I take. Somebody say, I know the, he know the way I am. I ain't good English, but some good stuff. He knows that. He knows your every coming or going. And when you get a chance, you make sure you read uh, Job 1, 23, 1 through 7, the preceding verses. You really need to see what he's trying to say there. Let's go to page 4. All right. Through trial, we are driven to focus more on heaven and eternity. Through trial. We are driven to focus more on heaven and eternity. Let me give you a definition of trials. Trials, a test or challenge of your faith, patience and stamina through subjection and suffering. A test or challenge of your faith, patience or stamina through subjection and suffering. A test or challenge of faith, patience, or stamina through subjection, through faith, through, uh, through subjection, or suffering. All right? Let's read 2 Corinthians 4, 17 through 18. Who got that? Who read? Whoever got it, just read it. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and get ready to read the next one in just a second. It says, for our light and momentary afflictions. How, have you ever been in a situation where it seemed light and momentary to everybody else, but it seemed like a lifetime for you? Because, see, trouble is relative. When you going through it, it seems forever. When somebody else going through it, you say, well, it ain't going to last forever. See, you got to understand something. It's all the way you see it. When you're in it, it's so much different. When you're in it, it's so much different. But understand something, it's a light affliction. If you don't have to endure the affliction of the cross, it's a light affliction. If you do not have to go through the crucifixion, the suffering, to be able to, it's a light affliction. These afflictions, as you do it, listen to what it says, light afflictions, this, this slight distress of this passing hour. 
is even more and more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving for us an everlasting weight of glory beyond all measure, excessively surpassing and compassion and calculation and vast transcendent glory. And uh, it comes to this that it will never cease. So when you're coming to this, it's trying to take you through that you can come out on the other side. And as Job talked about, that I can come out as pure gold. So through trials, we're driven to focus more on heaven and eternity, which means tomorrow, my outcome, my destiny. And, and you've got to understand this. What you go through on this side of glory, what you go on through on this side is temporal. It's a light affliction. From, from the rooter to the tutor, from, from, from birth to death, it's a light affliction. Because it will not compare to the glory that's going to be revealed. So that means weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. That's the situation we've got to understand. It ain't going to last forever. It ain't going to last forever. And understand that when I say it ain't going to last forever, this trial, this storm, this attack, this temptation, it, that ain't going to last forever. But those are light afflictions. The, 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 but there's something that worked more in ex, an excessive weight of glory. And that's the glory of God as we look to where we're going. People get messed up because they look where they're going here and don't look where their final outcome is. Eternal life starts here on earth, but it's manifested in its fullness when we go, come before the, the, the Lord and in glory. That's when it is. See, that in that place, there will be no more suffering, no more dying, no more bills, no more attack, no more haters. That's the ex excessive weight of glory. Over here, there's bills, there's doctor's appointments, there's attacks, there are haters. You're going to live with that all your life. I don't care how long you've been saved, but there's something coming that's better. And that's what we're looking for, reward. That's what you're looking for. I refuse to live in internal damnation, detriment, and depression over here when I know all I got to do is be saved. And I will go through. But if I can just hold on, if I can get to the other side, everything going to be all right. That's the Christian's hope. That's, that's why it says we, we don't sit here and grieve like the heathens do who have no hope. See, yeah, that's, that's what you got to have in your head, that, that even with death, that ain't the end of my story. Pastor, why they have to die? I'm, I'm upset they have to die. It hurts me they have to die. My, my, my spirit mourns with you they had to die. But to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord Jesus. That's what we have. That's the hope. And that's why we were doing a funeral a couple of years ago, and, and somebody who was non-church, they could not believe it. They didn't go to this church, but they could not believe it. You know what they couldn't believe? How we were shouting, hollering, and praising at a funeral. They said, Reverend, you need to meet with me. I can't understand this. The bank executive uh, handles one of the great banks in this area, does great work, but, but not church, not, not Christian. Came in and saw all that. and said, I got to talk to you. You got to give me a meeting because I don't understand how y'all doing all that. That person's loved one is gone. And, 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 the, and, the, and the woman of the, the, it was a husband that was up there and the, and the wife was shouting and praising the Lord and hallelujah. And he said, I don't want to be insistent. Asked her, so I figured I asked the one who was up there sweating like it was a Sunday morning, hollering and shouting and, and asking folk to come get saved. You got to explain this to me, Reverend, because it makes no sense. My friend is dead. My friend is gone. And y'all up there shouting, you got to help me with this. And when I took him that thing, that scripture, and I took him to uh, Second Thessalonians, I, I took him and went down there and started talking about him and talking about life after death and eternal life, he gave his life to Christ that same week, that same week. Because this was his statement. I'll never forget, Brother Smith. He said, the pain that I felt could not compare to the pain of the family. But if she and them were able to rejoice and shout, and they were closer to him than I was, but I was the one feeling robbed, and they were one rejoicing. I need to meet the God they serve because I need to get what they got. That's the eternal weight of glory that is on your life because you know this ain't the end. If I fight, if I trust, if I endure, if I have patience, 
God's going to reward me. And he's not only going to reward you in heaven, he's going to reward you right now until you get to your destination. But that's a part of the everlasting life and going through those troubles, trials, and afflictions. Amen. Uh, go ahead, Doc. Right back to it. Your mind, if your mind, thank you, Dr. New, if your mind don't re get renewed, this stuff looks foolish to you. If your mind don't get renewed, all this stuff is in one ear and out does it. Yeah, right. Let that happen to them. Let me tell you something. When your mind is renewed, you see stuff different. You, you do. How many of y'all know you see stuff different than you did 20 years ago? Once your mind got renewed. You might have been saved, but your mind won't renew. Let, let's see. See, 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 a lot of folks saved, but their mind ain't renewed. So they still complain over stupid stuff. They still fight over frivolous stuff. They still uh, get guns out when they can't pay their bills because they don't understand he's still Jehovah Jireh. That God will show up right when he needs to show up. They don't have a renewed mind. They don't have a renewed mind. Somebody say renew your mind. Renew your mind. Sister Lee. See, that's it. According to what? God's will. There's an old song that says, I will trust in the Lord till I die. That's that trust right there to understand when I got a renewed mind, I, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. That's what the man of God, what Job said. Naked I came into this world and naked I shall return. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. See, that takes a renewed mind. And he was going through trials and trouble. But he said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Good God from Zion. All right. Read that next scripture for me. Now, I got, I got to lift that up. It says that those things are brief and fleeting. They're temporal. They're momentary. So understand for the things that are visible, those things are. But those things that you can't see, those are the eternal things. Those things that are happening in the spirit. But if you don't have a renewed mind, and if you don't know that these are light afflictions, you will think the thing that you're going through right now is going to last forever when God will see you through this thing. And even though you may be affected, remember when um, uh, uh, Jacob wrestled with the Lord, uh, with, 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 he wrestled with a man all night long. And when he left, his, his hip was out of joint. And now he has a limp. And the limp, they did not take the limp away. What they did was, is he still, God still gave him the limp, but he still got deliverance. And he said, surely the Lord was in this place, and I knew it not. And he says, your name shall never no more be Jacob. It shall be what? Israel. For you have wrestled with God, and you survived. You've got to understand that he changes things when you wrestle and go through and you survive the things that you go through. But you can't survive if you ain't in it. Amen, somebody. Amen. Why does God afflict us? And I want you to write down this as a note, to keep us from pride. Sometimes God will afflict us to keep us from pride. That's 2 Corinthians 2 and 7. To keep us from pride, 2 Corinthians 2 and 7. And he also, in Psalms 25 and 16, he wants us to pray and be dependent on him. He wants us to pray and be dependent on him. All right, next slide. That's number six. A possible reason for trials is God's discipline that moves us to repentance and confession of sin. A possible reason for trials is God's discipline that moves us to repentance and confession of sins. Who's got Hebrews 12, 10, 11? Whoever going to read that? Hebrews 12, 10, 11. Chastise us. It's, it's harder to read off that paper. 
Amen. Chastise is defi defined, rebuke, and educate, and reprimand. Chastise, rebuke, reprimand, and educate. What God does, he does rebuke us. He also reprimands us. Through that, he educates us. Mom and them had it right, they just want Jesus. This is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. I was calling mom a untruth teller for years until I had children and had to whoop them myself. And there were times I had to whoop Brian and Lexi, and it hurt me to whoop them because they're mine. Some of y'all missed your shout there. When God has to whoop us, when he has to chastise us, when he has to reprimand us, rebuke us, through, and to educate us, it hurts the heart of God because we're his children. But it is necessary because if he didn't chastise us, we wouldn't be where we are right now. So, so understand this. Now, sometimes I enjoy whooping them, but, but most of the time, just play, it's the chastisement. God has to put that chastisement upon us to be able to, to reprimand us, to educate us that some things we don't need to do. And when we're out of his will, I think Sister Lee said it a while, while ago about being out of the will of God. So God has to chastise. I still love you, but, but, you, but you're wrong. And, and until you've had a whooping by God, you ain't had a whooping. Because God will whoop you in such a way. And you know what sometimes we do? Sometimes it's God whooping us and we blame the devil. devil the devil is the one that brought the temptation. We're the one that committed the act. God, therefore, chastised, and then we blame the devil for the suffering. No, 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 no. What happens is he's saying, so you will not be in error to this again. Let me whoop you for this right now. So when you have uh, get to the next thing, your faith will be able to, to be able to deny that temptation, and you will be able to be strong enough to walk away from it. So I built your faith by chastising you. Good God Almighty. All right? So you got to understand something that th th what he says is become sharers of his what? Own holiness. Holiness is a life, this is the definition, a life totally dedicated to God. Now, when you give your life to Christ, you walk in holiness because he's holy. So when people say, well, I I'm holiness, they say, oh, no, you I I'm holy. Don't you say that because you ain't perfect. That ain't what the definition is. That means I'm fully dedicated to God, trying to walk in his ways, following the word of God. That's what I'm holy because he's holy. It's through him. I can't do it myself. It's by the grace of God. Y'all still with me? So let's read this real quick. I got to stop. Um, for the time being, no discipline brings joy, but seems grievous and painful. But afterward, it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by if, if, if harvest of fruit which consists in righteousness, in conformity of God's will and purpose, thought and action resulting in right living and right standing with God. You hear that right living and right standing? That means to be righteous. I'm in right standing and right living with God. But it seems grievous and painful. For the time being, no discipline brings joy. But we just said, count it all joy. Have you ever been in the thing? And felt like, oh, my God, why am I going through this? Lord, help me. Why am you letting me go through this again? Then God holds you back from something that was worse. And then you say, you know what? I just want to thank you, God. I want to thank you for protecting me from danger, seen and unseen of stuff I could have been in. And that's when you get a renewed mind. You count it all joy, even though you're in the situation. I've been in situations, so, and, and, and I said it one time, and y'all done heard me say it before, but I'm going to keep on testifying to the Lord take me home. In 2016, I was not this happy after I lost running for bishop. And I couldn't see why God showed me I was going to be bishop, and I didn't become him. I never cursed him. I never doubted him. But I was saying, so, okay, I get it. You mad at me. I see what it is. I see what you're doing. I see how you're rolling. I see how you're rolling. That's all right, God. Do, do, okay, I, I hear you. I, I'm going to tell you the truth. 
I, 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 now, I'm going to just tell you the truth because it's me testifying about what God did. So ain't none of y'all can be able to condemn me to hell. I said, well, you know, maybe I don't need to press as hard. Maybe I don't need to preach as hard. Maybe I don't need to teach as hard. Maybe I need to miss some Sundays and stop missing my vacation days because you didn't sit up there and let me get loose in front of all these folk when you sat up there and told me I was going to be bishop. And then the Lord came to me and touched my spirit. And I said it felt like fire shut up in my bones. And he said, didn't I tell you that I had you? Didn't I tell you that I was going to have to grow you up? That I was going to have to get you where I needed to get you before I could elevate you? That's what he said. And he said, I'm going to bring it to pass. I just got to let you go through some more stuff. I got to let you go through some crying and some hardships and some afflictions. I've got to let you go through. And this is the platform I'm going to use to elevate you. But you're going to have to trust me through this thing right now. That hole in your chest, I'll fill it back up. But you're going to have to trust me. And on July 31st, 2021, that was. And God brought, some people asked me why I was sitting there so long in my chair. And I didn't get up and go and receive it. Me and my wife didn't go up. And she was sitting there holding me because God reminded me. Bro Craven, he reminded me of all the stuff he brought me through. And he took me back to 2016. And said, I had to let you feel that. So when you feel this, you wouldn't get above yourself that you would stay humble, that you would still talk to folk, that you would still keep your eyes on me. And when he did that, and I could get up and I could see why I had to go through that, I was able to count it all joy. I was able to give him glory. And some of you don't understand. You're going to have to have some letdown. You're going to have to have some affliction. That's going to be some things that are going to be cut away from you, taken away from you, just for you to be able to get to that place that you can say, I count it all joy because there's an exceeding eternal weight of glory that's a whole lot better than this, but I've got to endure. So understand, people. They, see, I share stuff with y'all I don't intend in sharing with y'all, but God, the Holy Spirit will do that and mess you up because sometimes he has to do that to get you to the point where you realize it ain't going to last forever. So I want you all to understand, the same way he brought me out, the way, same way he bring Van Dyke out, same way he bring Lee out, the same way he bring Fields out, the same way he bring a Duncan Carter out, he's the same God. And if he's the same God back then, right now, yesterday, today, and forever, just go through and you will come out on the other side. Come on and give God praise in the place. Amen. Amen. There may be somebody out there who wants to get saved today. I don't know where you are. You might be that banker that came to the funeral. He went to a funeral, and his heart won't right, and something got the hold of him, and he got saved that next week. Maybe you're here, and you want to get saved too. If you want to get saved, just come, and you can get saved today. Or if you're a hybrid, if you're watching us virtually, you can say, and I can't see that far, but they say, Lord Jesus, I've spent this time up into my life sinning against you. Lord, I repent of my sin. Lord, I believe that thou art the Son of God, and I believe that you have been raised from the dead. Lord, come into my heart and make it your home in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer that's on the screen, or you believe in your heart that you gave your life to Christ today and you fully and totally gave it, God has saved your life through Jesus Christ. If you want, if you got saved today, call us at 855-979-9804. 855-979-9804. Or if you want to join the church, we'd love to have you as a member of Simon Temple. We have folks join every Sunday for the last few Sundays because people realize this is the house of God. So if you want to uh, uh, join the church, I invite you to come. 855-979-9804. It's time for us to go from this place, but never from God's holy and righteous presence. And I want to say to somebody out there that's watching, you heard my testimony, and you're going through something right now, and you've got a testimony. It won't ever fall in place. 
until you make Jesus your Savior. Call on the Lord right now and call us at 855-979-9804 and let us celebrate with you about your decision to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. Now to him that is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless for his throne and glory with exceedingly great joy to our Father and God. Be glory, dominion, majesty, and power. Let the redeemed of the Lord say amen. 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 God bless you. Next Wednesday, there will be a, I didn't, we, we, we're not live, right? 